Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four, and today I'm giving you an update on COVID vaccination as it relates to pregnancy and fertility. I recently made an update video on COVID-19 and its effects in pregnancy. If you'd like to check that out, I will link it in the I card or in the description box below. This information is up to date to the best of my ability as of the day of filming, which is August 31st, 2021. In this video, we're covering our COVID-19 vaccination safe in pregnancy. Do the COVID-19 vaccinations cause infertility? Does COVID-19 vaccination lead your body to attack placentas? Aren't you concerned about the long-term effects of the vaccine and whether antibodies are transferred through the placenta and through the breast milk to the baby? If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you. I talk about all things periods, pregnancy, period products, gynecology, and everything in between. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I promise you will leave with things to tell your friends. Are COVID-19 vaccinations safe in pregnancy? We now have sufficient data to say that COVID-19 vaccinations are safe to be given during pregnancy. This means that outcomes in people who are pregnant and not vaccinated are similar to people who are pregnant and they get vaccinated. And people who are pregnant and get vaccinated have better outcomes if they contract COVID-19 during the pregnancy than people who get COVID-19 during pregnancy and are not vaccinated. Please, 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 get vaccinated even if you're pregnant. The recommendation to get vaccinated during pregnancy if you have not already been vaccinated is not just coming from me. This is from every major medical organization and expert that is tasked with taking care of people who are pregnant or who have recently had a baby. Please, please, please consider this. And if you have any questions, bring them up with your doctor or midwife. Does the COVID-19 vaccination even work in pregnant people? Yes, we have very good data now to indicate that COVID-19 vaccination is not only safe, but also effective if you are getting it during pregnancy. It does decrease the risk of COVID-19 infection. Does COVID-19 vaccination cause miscarriage or stillbirth? There is absolutely zero evidence to indicate there is an association here. I know this is one of the things that goes around on the internet as disinformation, and it is not true. JAMA recently released a review of vSAFE data that indicated that these risk rates fall within the expected range for the baseline population and are not increased in people who are vaccinated. In fact, the rate of pregnancy loss in the largest data review that we have on people who are vaccinated for COVID-19 during pregnancy indicates that their pregnancy loss rates rank at the lower side of the range that we see in people in the general population for pregnancy loss. Based on this data, we can say there does not appear to be any increased risk in miscarriage, stillbirth, pregnancy complications, growth restriction, genital anomalies, or neonatal death or complications in people who were vaccinated for COVID-19 during pregnancy. As always, I've linked these sources in the description box below if you'd like to check out the data. I will once again here repeat, many of these things are significantly increased in people who have COVID-19, especially severe COVID-19 during pregnancy. The vaccine reduces the risk of COVID-19 in pregnancy as well as severe infection in pregnancy and thus reduces your risk if you are to contract COVID-19, even if you have a breakthrough infection. Please, please, please understand that this can be very dangerous and devastating at baseline, but especially if you are pregnant. Does COVID-19 vaccination cause infertility? This is another one that is spread over and over as misinformation on the internet. Why? Because it's effective and it scares people. So what do we know? Earlier this year, I did a video about where this idea originated and why it was biologically completely implausible. The idea that these two proteins are so similar that your antibodies could mount an immune response is a bit of a extremist claim. They do have some similarities. A lot of viruses have similarities. They would need to be extremely similar. And we're just not finding that when you actually look at the genetic sequencing of the spike protein and the syncytion one protein that they're talking about. I also discussed in that video that the person who is spreading the information has no expertise in pregnancy or birth and has no understanding of basic pregnancy physiology based on the fact that they presumed that COVID-19 antibodies would attack the placenta and that this would cause infertility. I probably have a very large viewership right now going, that doesn't make any sense because if it attacks the placenta, that wouldn't cause infertility, it would cause pregnancy loss. And you're right, why? The placenta is not even functioning until nine weeks into the pregnancy. So if this theory was true, it's not, it would actually cause miscarriage 
not infertility. But there is no evidence that COVID-19 vaccination causes either of those. Despite the lack of biologic plausibility, we studied it anyway. And this study revealed that if you compared people going through IVF treatments and having an embryo transfer, and you looked at a group of people with no antibodies, natural antibodies from a previous COVID infection and antibodies from a vaccination, there were no difference in pregnancy rates across these three groups. Meaning neither COVID infection in the past nor vaccination in the past decreases your chances of pregnancy in the future. Additionally, we also can review the data from the original studies on the vaccination. The number of unplanned pregnancies did not differ between the patients who had received the placebo and the patients who had received the COVID vaccine. There was no difference. If these vaccinations were affecting fertility, you would expect to see a far lower number of accidental pregnancies and a far lower number of pregnancies in the IVF study in the people who had been vaccinated. So we've established that theory has no biologic plausibility, no data, and sufficient data to say it is nonsense. Of course, once this person was proven wrong, by my biologic plausibility information in the original video several months ago, and now with hard data, they decided that they would change their tune and say, well, it may not cause infertility, but COVID vaccine antibodies definitely cause placental attack, which could lead to pregnancy complications and miscarriage. Fortunately, we expected this. People who spread misinformation, when they're proven wrong, they switch and they spread it in a different way, especially if the campaign was effective the first time. So we studied this, and even almost before it could come out of this person's mouth, we proved it wrong. Now we have a study that looks specifically at the histology of placentas and compares placentas from people who were vaccinated to people who were unvaccinated at the time of delivery. And what that study found based on four histological markers of placental damage is that there was no difference between histological indicators of placental damage in the group which was vaccinated and the group which was not. Interestingly, there was actually an increased risk of inflammation in the placentas which came from unvaccinated people. However, the relevance of that information at this point is completely unclear, so we're not going to talk about it at length. As I said earlier, we've already figured out that based on the data we have, there is also no increased risk of miscarriage or pregnancy loss based on a huge review of the currently given vaccinations in people who get the vaccine while pregnant. All of these studies are linked in the description box below if you would like to review them. What do I have to say to the people who say, we don't know the long-term effects of the vaccination. You can't say this until we have three years of data or five years of data. This is arbitrary. You can't just come up with an arbitrary amount of time for long-term complications. We need to look at this from a historical perspective as well as an absolute and relative risk perspective. Never in the history of vaccinations has there been a vaccine which was safe and effective early on, and then three years later, we found a random severe side effect that just suddenly popped up. mRNA specifically is what people seem to be worried about. mRNA is degraded in your body within hours to days and certainly is gone within a couple of weeks. And all that remains is your body's response, meaning antibodies to protect you against COVID-19. Vaccine side effects are known to occur mostly in the first few days, but maybe up to a couple of months after you get the vaccine. So no, we do not have to wait three years or five years or some other arbitrary number that someone who has no idea what they're talking about comes up with to decide that COVID-19 vaccinations do not cause infertility. We have the data, we have historical precedents for this. And even if we didn't, I think it is extremely important to look at this from a relative and absolute risk standpoint. In the short term, COVID-19 is dangerous. Dangerous. It can cause extreme illness and death in higher amounts by far than any vaccine side effects that we are seeing. In the short term, vaccines are known to be both safe and effective at preventing these problems. In the long term, we know that a history of COVID infection can cause major issues. We also know that historically, many viruses have complications which go on long term or pop up later on in life. Vaccinations have never done that, and there is absolutely no data to indicate that that will be different with this vaccination. When you are weighing the relative risk and benefit for somebody who is either wanting to be pregnant, currently pregnant, might ever be pregnant, or even doesn't even wanna get pregnant, but just is concerned about the things that people are saying, the vaccine outweighs the virus by magnitudes as far as safety goes. Please, please, please protect yourself and protect your fertility by staying alive and getting vaccinated. Our antibodies transferred to the baby through breast milk or the placenta. We now have really good data to say that yes, antibodies do go through the placenta to the baby and through breast milk to the baby. As far as how much protection this actually provides, 
We aren't sure yet. Step one is figuring out if it happens, which we know it does. Step two is figuring out what the level is that is needed for protection and if this antibody transfer actually conveys that amount and protects the baby after birth, either through transfer through the placenta or breastfeeding. We are working on that. Step three is figuring out how long this protection lasts and the optimum time for a baby or child to be vaccinated. And that's something that we're working on as well. I do think it is incredibly encouraging that we are seeing the antibodies transferred through the placenta and through the breast milk to the baby. I hope that you learned something today. If you did, please leave a like, send this to a friend, give a comment, anything to help it get out to more people and combat the misinformation that we are seeing everywhere on the internet. Thank you for being here today. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you hit that subscribe button. I will see you next Monday.